Well, this is it. This is the last day before the tournament. I call this fun day. We pretty much established a pattern for the for the uh, next couple of days with the tournament, and we're just gonna go catch fish today and uh, have fun. So this is Squants Pond, and it's eligible for this uh, the KBF event on uh, on Candlewood. It's just an alternate alternate body of water that's legal. Uh, during this tournament. Good 17, 18 inch fish. Nice man. Nice. So Jody got that one on the spinner bait, and I've been throwing the crankbait a bit, and we're just kind of exploring the possibility of, of secondary patterns, and in particular finding one that you can cover a lot of ground quickly. And, and I know that he covers a lot of ground quickly with the mag fatties. Um, but I mean just moving at a very, very good speed, at, well, moving at Russ Snyder's speed. Um, and we've been trying. I, I think that, that spinnerbait fish was the first moving bait fish that, um, that he's caught. I mean, it's always good to have, have a backup pattern. I mean, you never know what... The conditions are going to change from day to day. I mean, right now we're in a pretty stable weather, weather pattern, but there's a lot of things that affect, you know, your pattern from day to day. Uh, one example, I, I fished Hartwell down here in, in South Carolina, and on the day before the tournament started in pre-fishing, I had a bank that was just, I mean, it was loaded with fish. And... You know, I had a decent pattern with the chatterbait, which everybody knows I throw chatterbait. But, uh, overnight, the water dropped a foot and a half, and the bank where I was fishing, the nests, the, the fish that were nesting, the nests were out of the water. I mean, it, it was crazy how much that water dropped. And my pattern, it just, it was non-existent. Uh, all the grass that I was throwing on was... You know, and I didn't really have a backup pattern at that time, so I had to switch horses in midstream. And if I would have, you know, thrown a jig the day before, I probably would have, you know, had my second pattern. Instead, it took me two or three hours to figure out, you know, what my next pattern was going to be. And, you know, by that time, the adjustments that I made and uh, the time that I wasted, it hurt me in, in that tournament. I think I finished 21st in that tournament. Is that on the spinner bait again? Yep. Good. So that might be our, our secondary. So here's a, an example of increased mortality by catch and release. This fish has been caught before and he's had a, a hook down in his in his gill. You can see it sticking out right there. And it's been totally clipped. And you know, if that fish were, you know, kept on a line or kept in a live well, this fish would have died. But he has repaired himself and you can see the gill rake is, is hanging outside the body outside his mouth rather hmm. and it's but he's repaired himself he was probably caught and released you know immediately and he's 
he's healed. So there's a lot to be said for catch and release. Let's get him back in there. He survived once, he'll survive this one. Bye, buddy. Now, so spinnerbait, billy goat. So what is it? I mean, I don't know, but uh, they seem to be a hitting a variety of baits. There's no real pattern other than changing baits every 15 minutes. I don't know. <laughs> now you you got a you had a 19 on the on a, on a shaky head shaky head mm -hmm. that broke you off. Yeah, yeah. He wrapped me around the limb, and broke me off. And okay, we got spinner bait. Yep, got it. Had a had an 18 on a spinner bait and uh had a 10 incher on a spinner bait and now we got a 16 on a on a goat so, so this is a different lake what's it's a different what's, lake what's, well this is squance lake squance pond squance pond and it's almost devoid of of grass and there's no i don't know i think that we're probably going to head back down to the to, uh the big lake because most of our pattern on the other lake involves some some type of vegetation. This this lake doesn't have a lot of it. I mean, you're getting like, you know, 14 and 16 inch fish here, and we were getting 18, 19, right. and 20 over there where there's yep. a lot more grass. Yep, I think the the average size of our fish are a little bit bigger down there. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there's some nice fish in here, but yeah, I just don't think they're as you know predict predictable where they're going to be. Uh, down in the other lake, we know that they're spawning in areas, and we figured out that uh, they're hanging out in a certain depth. And I think this lake is going to be all over the charts. I mean, I think we can pull a, a limit out of here, but I'm not real confident on the size. All right, so you you've know. eliminated this water. Yes, let's, this, this water is eliminated. Let's go check out another part of Candlewood. That sounds good to me. All right, let's zoom. All right. That's a big difference. The water temperature's like two degrees warmer already. We just sat in over here. That's awesome. That, and that might be, you know, the reason why these fish are so accessible. I mean, they're so predictable because just that little difference in temperature can mean a lot. I mean, I've seen times when a, a degree or two is going to make, make a huge difference. Underneath the uh, under the trees, all the way to the back, and uh, pretty much on cue. You know, being on the road all the time, you know, if I was a single guy, I, I think it'd be a lot easier. But, you know, I have a wife and family there at the house, and I got things that I do. And, you know, Vicky's just an amazing person, and you know. You need that anchor. You gotta have that anchor and know that you know she's okay with what I'm doing. Knowing that just takes all the pressure off of me having to travel. You know, last tournament was my 30th anniversary. I fished the day of my anniversary. Uh, I skipped the, the way in to get back and spend a few hours with her. We had that night and the next day, and then I left for this tournament. You know, that's, that's a lot. That's a lot to expect from somebody. You know? And we've been together 30 years. We know each other. We love each other. And, you know, having that, in my, knowing that she's in my corner and supporting what I do, you know, when I get home, she's like, okay, give me your expenses, you know, do this. And she's, just, she's the person I love, and she manages this part of my life, and she follows me when I'm fishing, and she calls all you know, friends, Joe's and Ben, or, you know, it's just having that kind of support really allows me to do what I love. And, you know, it's, it's just no equal. I couldn't do it without her. Thank <laughs> you. 
So one of the things we figured out is, I mean, the pattern's working pretty much all over the lake. I mean, anywhere we find that the fish are nesting, they're, you know, they're willing to hit. But it seems like up in this part of the lake, I don't know if it's pressure or, or what's going on, they're just, or the lay of the lake, the geography is a little bit different up in here. But they're just not so many of them, and they all seem to be a little bit smaller. Now this fish is going to go maybe 17, 18 inches maybe. But we want that big average size, and it seems like we're doing a lot better down lake. So I think that you know, on current day tomorrow, we're going to probably start down lake and try to find some more of these, only in a little bit bigger size. I mean, we come up in this cove and there was a bass boat that shot in here before we could get into the back of the cove and they pulled stuff out and they, and they sat there and fished and they did a couple circles and, and then they picked up and left. And when I got to the area where they were fishing, I seen that there was like three nice, clean, well-formed nests. There was no fish on them. What happens in a lot of these tournaments is they catch these fish off the bed and then they transport them 10, 15, 20 miles to a weigh-in. And those fish never make it back. Those those nests are clean, so those fish haven't been off those nests for a long time, and the large mouth are just moving up. So those fish have probably been taken off the nest, transported, and they'll they'll never come back to this nest. You know, maybe not at least this not this season. So yeah, I mean the importance of catch and release. I mean I can't stress it enough. I mean I I, I love that you know the KBF started this catch photo release thing. I think it's I think it's the future of our fisheries. So, and what's happening is they're running to these obvious places back in the heads of these coves. They're running off the, these big long flats that come out that hold up, you know, the nesting every year. And they're missing the less obvious places. And these fish get used to that. They get used to that pressure and they'll, they'll nest other places. And I think that's what uh, Jeff and I are picking up. We're picking up these, these fish that have, they've already been through all that. They don't want no part of it and they're, and they're they're hitting these less uh, obvious places, these small ledges that come off these deep areas, and they're making their nests there, and there's less pressure on them. Because almost every fish that we've caught that's been decent has been off of one of those less obvious areas. But they know. Well, we're here at the base shop. We're getting ready to stock up. You know, 75 or 80 anglers, when we come to these small towns, we get, you know, if an angler stays in a motel or something like that, I mean, we spend between $700 and $1,000. Now, I mean, you got 80 anglers. That, that pumps quite a bit of money into these lo little local com economies. So, you know, we try to go to the, you know, the local stores, local bait shops and stuff like that. And, and uh, it, it's just good for a community. The whole dynamic of the right. And that's why there's no difference. Listen up. So we just got through with the captain's meeting. I'm all set for tomorrow. The identifier code has been released. KBF has us our food from the Crafty Q barbecue truck. Man, the food was awesome. 
Great crowd. Let's do this thing tomorrow. I'm ready.